All right, now in order to uh, work with uh, Henderson Hasselbach, again, we have to be very comfortable with logs and uh, taking the P of something. So let's, uh, that's something we worked on a lot last time. So let's make sure we're still comfortable with that since it's been a while since we met. So uh, let's see here. So remind me, what's the log of 10 to the fifth? Good. Okay, so we have our log of uh, 10 to the fifth, and you saw that was five. Good. Remember that logarithms just mean the exponent, and we're just working with base 10 logarithms, so it's the exponent on the base 10. So let's make sure we know this logarithm. So let's review that one. So the basic trick we're seeing is, in order to take a logarithm without a calculator, we have to express the number as a power of 10. In order to take a logarithm without a calculator, we have to express the logarithm as a power of 10. Uh, express the number as a power of 10. Well, how can we express the number 1 as a power of 10? What power of 10 is the number 1 equal to? Uh, well, to review, what's 10 squared? What number is that? And what's 10 to the first power? What number is 10 to the first power? Ten. Yeah, 10. Good. And what number is 10 to the zeroth power? One. Yeah, that's right. This might be a counterintuitive, but we need to know that anything to the zeroth power is 1. You can see the pattern here. We take each number and we divide it by 10. If you take this and divide by 10, you get 10. So if you divide by 10 again, you get 1. OK, so uh, my question to you is, what power of 10 does 1 represent? So zero. yeah, if you see the number 1, we can express that as 10 to the 0. So I can take this log of 1. I know it's hard to take a logarithm unless I express the number as a power of 10. So let's express this as 10 to the 0. And now what would the logarithm be? Right. The whole reason that we did this is because now it's straightforward to take the logarithm. The logarithm is the power of 10. Well. That would be zero here. OK. So uh, it's important to remember that this is important uh, for uh, you in general anyway, but anything to the zeroth power is going to be 1. OK, so uh, if, some, if we don't have a power of 10, we have to rewrite it as a power of 10 to take the logarithm without the calculator. So what's the log of 10? Well, we know the logarithm is the power of 10. Here we already have a 10, so we just have to ask what's its exponent. Well, we know 10 is really 10 to the first power. Mm -hmm. And then the exponent is 1. OK, good. All right, 
right, now let's take the logarithm of 8 times 10 to the fifth. That sounds good. Let's review the process for that, but I think that you're uh, clear in your, uh, your mind about that. So the point here is this is not a simple power of 10, so we're not going to be able to figure this out exactly, but we can approximate this. Even without a calculator, we can approximate this. Well, let's start by comparing, uh, just focusing on the number on the inside. So we could say that number on the inside over there, 8 times 10 to the fifth, well, we know that's really between 10 to the 5th and 10 to the 6th. So we could say this is between 10 to the 5th and 10 to the 6th. These are like our references. And now we can take the log of everything. Now, when you take the logarithm, do the inequalities stay the same or reverse? That's what you did when you were solving the problems. That's good. Because when x is big, does that mean the log of x is big or small? small. Ah, so if that were true, then there would be a, an inverse relationship between these two things. If there was an inverse relationship, then we would have to flip the inequalities. So in actuality, when x gets bigger, its logarithm also gets okay. bigger. We've already, uh, yeah, when x gets bigger, this is an important idea to have again in your notes and make a flashcard up. Well, one way to put this is there's a direct relationship between x and the log of x. They're directly related. The bigger x is, the bigger its logarithm is. I was thinking p of x. Right. That's what we saw last time. The reason it's so confusing to learn this stuff is that a lot of the things that are true for logarithms are not true for the p's. And a lot of things that are true for the p's are not true for the logarithms. So that's why it's important to just keep constantly reviewing this so that uh, you don't get the various ideas confused. When, uh, when you have a bigger x, it has a bigger logarithm. We already saw that anyway, because for example here, um, here we took the log of 1, and here we took the log of 10. Right. Well, 10 is bigger than 1, and its logarithm was also bigger. Right. So we saw that when you go from 1 to 10, the logarithm goes from 0 to 1. So the bigger x over here really did give us a bigger logarithm. Right. Okay. The th uh, x and the, uh, the thing you're taking the logarithm of and the logarithm itself are directly related. And that's the reason why when we take the logarithms here, the inequalities don't flip. Right. If this is the smallest number, it should have the smallest logarithm. Mm -hmm. And since this is the biggest number in the inequality, it should have the biggest logarithm. That was the whole point of this idea here. Bigger numbers have bigger logarithms. So since 10 to the sixth is the biggest number in this inequality, it should have the biggest log. Now the purpose of this is that we can't, we can't really figure out this log, but we can figure out this log. The log of 10 to the fifth is 5. and the log of 10 to the 6 is 6. And now we have our approximation. We can't say, without a calculator, we can't say exactly how big this logarithm is, but we can say it's between 5 and 6. And as we've talked about on your test, it's good enough to just approximate like this, since you're not allowed to use a calculator on your test. It's good enough to just approximate the log to within a one integer range. So this would be good enough to, to find the answer here for your test. Ah, and this is the answer you gave, so you came up with this. But it's important to review the reasoning so that we don't, uh, so that we know how to do this, so we don't get confused with a different way to take the p of something that we'll talk about in a second. So our answer here is that without a calculator, we can't find the logarithm exactly, but we know it's between five and six. That's the answer you came up with. We just wanted to review the reasoning for that.
So I think this is definitely the best notation to work this out. It's good to actually write this down on paper if you're getting confused. Once you're very comfortable with this, you can just go straight to the step. But, okay? Yeah, the, the board is kind of smudgy. This means five is less than the logarithm, and the logarithm is less than six. That's just the answer that you came up with. 